Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Sports Central. I'm Neil Duncan. We've got a great show lined up for you today. We've got USA Water Ski and Wake Sports Foundation. I want to make sure I get that right. They just recently had a name change. We also have Southeastern University Basketball and the Lakeland Pro Rodeo Classic. Stick around, everybody, for this week's edition of Sports Central. Everybody. Welcome back to Sports Central. I'm Neil Duncan alongside Hank Longo, and uh, you're in your festive, yeah, it's your this festive time of the year. year. Yeah. yeah. A little ho 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 going on. You I know. didn't get the memo. Yeah. I, I, I think you did that it. on purpose just to, to, I didn't, I don't to look better anyone. than me, right? Yeah. I just kind of like to surprise you each show. You definitely surprised yeah, me. Have a little each fun. Show. <laughs> yeah. I surprised myself each show, actually. Well, but go our, ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say our first uh, segment here uh, definitely a long standing partner of uh, Polk County Tourism Sports Marketing. And I kind of stumbled over the name change there, but I know it's a, lo it's a sport that you've been long affiliated with, and I would like you to introduce our well, first guest. Well, thank you so much. Our first segment sponsored by Harry's Old Place. I want to thank them very much. And a very special guest today, a dear friend of mine and the executive director of USA Water Ski and Wake Sports, Sports. the new name, yes. Yes. Tracy Mattis. And Hello. So delighted thank to have you on the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. Happy to have you here during this festive holiday season yes. that we're getting yep. underway. A uh, lot's going on with you. Boy, things are really moving along now. So share with us all this fantastic stuff It is, stuff we've got, going yeah, on. we've just, well, as you know, we're building the new water sports complex out of the Lake Myrtle Sports Park. And uh, we've really come a long way with it. Um, phase one is scheduled to open um, this spring, early summer of this spring. So all six cable towers are up. If you drive past Lake Myrtle, you see that on the lake. They kind of blend into the park, but if you drive out there and look, you can see the cable park up. So that was really exciting. That was a big milestone for us. We had our groundbreaking last last uh, September, and then we've had a lot of site work and road work and you know, infrastructure stuff done, and that's that's not always the sexy stuff you see with the big trucks. So, um, <laughs> so for the cable tower to go up, it's actually you know something you physically see. And um, and soon we'll be starting. We just uh, we're just clo we're in the middle of closing on the sale of our existing property. It will become a master craft boat dealership. So it keeps it in the water ski family, which is very great. Very much so. Very much. And then they will they will have events and things and, and sell boats and and just stay very connected to us and and to the water ski community. As you know, we're working with Action Parks, which is a correct craft. So it, it's great that we're kind of including all the different boat companies. And we need to do that. <laughs> yes. As a sport. We yes. definitely need to do that. So obviously a, a project of this magnitude, the mm -hmm. size, there's so many different moving parts, yes. uh, obviously, <laughs> and it's been broken down into different phases. So Correct. if let's kind of, I know the the Cable Water Ski Park was part of Phase One, but what yes. are what are some of the other components of Phase One, and then where does it move, and what's the timeline of that? So in addition to to the Cable Park being up right now, they will have an on the water cafe, a pro shop, uh, the docks, the parking lot, you know, everything that goes along with that, so they can start. People can start coming out there, getting on the cable, they can start having events. So that whole thing will be, that is phase one. Phase two will then be the building, which is the, the museum, the Halls of Fame, uh, the U.S. Hall of Fame, the International Water Ski and Wakeboard Hall of Fame. We'll have a satellite office for the International Federation. We will host the uh, USA National Governing Body Federation and our headquarters office. That will all be in phase two of the building. And along with phase two, the three event lake is being dug. And that actually possibly could move up to phase one. So that's why we haven't really kind of put that in a phase right now, because there's other projects. The SunTrax project is going around and some other things going around town with that they need dirt. So they're looking at our property, working with Bobby Green in the city of Auburndale, looking at that and getting, which, which would, they would dig the lake to our specifications. They would get the dirt they want in the city. It's on their property. So it's, it's really a win-win win for, for everybody. everybody. And that's what we always try to do in our partnership is make that a win-win for everybody. Let's go back a little bit for, for folks that might not be, you know, we get talking cable park, and right. for us that are involved in the sport, we mm -hmm. know what that is. But for mm -hmm. those that are watching and wondering what is a cable park, let's share that with the Okay. Folks. Well, I think a, a, most people, if they've driven to the airport, they've seen the OWC, which is the Orlando Water Sports Complex. And we've partnered with them. Action Parks operates that one. They operate one in Miami. And what it is is a cable system that runs, and they can put it at speeds for 
for beginners or the pros with all the different features out there and they can do the ramps and the jumps and things and what it does is it opens it up to really to the every kid if you want to get on the water if you want to learn to ski or if you want to learn to wakeboard if you want to get you can get on those cables for 30 bucks in some cases 25 30 to 40 you can have and what there's they're all different doing passes. is the cable yes. is the the ski they're rope is hooked up to the cable yep. and the and cable goes yep. around and that's what's pulling you without the boat exactly. so you're skiing without a boat exactly you're getting pulled by the cable system right you well he's saying it. pulled if it's me it's drug right it's dr well yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, it's drowning let go, let go. Drowning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very disarming for the new new ones because you really just hold on and you sit on the dock and it pulls them and it can get really if you've seen some of like the world cups or world championships those features are if you've seen like the big snowboard in the winter games mm -hmm. you know it's basically the same stuff on water they hit those giant ramps and the different features and it's becoming more extreme and that's what the kids love about it and they want to well, they want to do that and and with the the rising expense of boats you know we've some of these boats are now over a hundred grand oh yeah so if you're easily. a young kid that doesn't have that your parents don't have it you don't have friends that have that a lot of private or not on a private lake that may have that um, this really opens it up to, to the masses to be able to come and enjoy the sport and learn to ski and then they and then they look at the boats and say well I want to try that too so again it it, it helps grow the sport kind of from the inside. It also but gives an opportunity to train without needing a spotter and someone yes. to run the boat. Oh, and exactly. So yes. It, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Again, not a water skier, but mm -hmm. it's hard to train when you don't have those two other people exactly. on the same time schedule. That the you're driver. On. Yep, this the allows driver and for the uh, athletes from across not only Florida but the country to come in and train yes. at a high high performance facility. So yes. that's fantastic. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. And then we're looking. We're working with the IWWF to bring the first World Cup ever to the United States, which is the cable w cable park and then the water skiing simultaneously they have a world cup that combines them both so we're excited to to bring that to the united states and uh, make a big deal out of that at our new location i think it's so interesting i think uh, sorry, i was just gonna say i think it's interesting you're naming a lot of organizations and you mm -hmm. already have the florida youth soccer association mm -hmm. out there like more of the florida state uh, soccer association yes. full kind tourism sports marketing uh, mm -hmm. one of the largest collegiate spring training mm -hmm. going right. on in the country so it's really becoming a sports destination. It really is, and, and we're, we're proud too because we're so proud of what's already been there because it's a big advantage to us to have all of this here. We're stepping onto a multi-million dollar sports complex, so we're proud to bring the on the water aspect, which is not there, that will just kind of enhance it for everybody because you've got the soccer, the baseball, football, and now you've got all the on the water, and I think it just makes it unlike other parks anywhere in, this, in, in, in Florida, in this area. Well, the thing that's so nice about it is that I think the one thing that's hurt us at the, the current location mm -hmm. is just uh, being able to get to the facility. Yes. We, and here the exposure, mm -hmm. of course you had good exposure on right. I-4, which is going to be great for MasterCraft you just couldn't dealership. Get to, right. You know, right. And, and they'll make it easy for yes. people to get to because they'll right. have the Well, they, the have the draw. they have the draw that pulls them To be able to do off. it and, do, and, yeah. and get them there. Whereas here as you're going down Polk Parkway, yep. you're, you're going to see, see people cable skiing and all the mm -hmm. people that are coming to the park for different events are going right. to see the the cable skiing right and um, it's just going to give you so much more exposure exactly. to so many more people by having it at Lake and we've Myrtle. been talking with you know the city and with Mark Jackson and yourself about the different events and things like that concerts fireworks sunrise you know different things that that happen out there that we can build a show or an event around and that that way the community and the the visitors and the tourists can come to, to a special destination they're really not going to see anywhere else well, as someone again, not in necessarily didn't grow up in the, the water ski industry, so the wake events will be at mm -hmm. the at the I'd lakes like that'll be that'll be dug, Can, or are wake events part of? The cable. We're, we're building the, the lake is going to be 18 feet deep, so it can run the it can run the water ski. It's going to have the the islands around with the jumps going both ways, so you can have a world class water ski event. You can have a world class wakeboard event, or you can even have a world class wake surf event. So we deliberately went that far deep because the, the new boats with the wakes they create, especially mm -hmm. the big rising thing now is wake surfing. You know, so that's right. and the and to do that the the. The engines go and the wakes go even more. So we we were careful to look yeah. ahead with the R and D and what's coming in the future to go deep enough that we could accommodate all of those things that are yeah, coming. You don't want to dig it and so. then find out two years later it's yeah, exactly. the bottom of the exactly. Exactly. Yep. 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 Can't do that. Yeah. That's right. Um, but then again, the other the beauty of it is with Lake Myrtle and the way that the cable park is set up mm -hmm. uh, on the lake is that you can also have 
uh, uh, water ski events there yes. that are not cable mm -hmm. uh, related. You can have water ski shows, shows different things like that, because mm -hmm. the lake is big enough for that, and we really want to accommodate all those nine disciplines that we have. So this really, then, correct me if I'm wrong, this really centralizes a lot of things for uh, USA Water Ski and, yes. and the foundation mm -hmm. as far as one stop for events, not only national championships, but international championships. Exactly. And are there any other facilities similar to this? I know you said at Lake Merle with the other sports. Are there that many facilities that can compete at this There's, level? Well, this what, what's going to make this unique is having the lakes, having the, the on the water, the cable park, because you see different parks that have. There's cable parks, there's OWC, there's fantastic ones, mm -hmm. but they don't have the, the soccer and the baseball and the football. And then you right. see other all over, uh, baseball fields in different places, but they don't have all these aspects together in one place. And I think that that's really what's going to make this destination special, and we will be able to market that as something that stands alone from anything else you know, that you, you see in the well, area. Well, you throw in another element mm -hmm. here. Even for the even for the water skiers, mm -hmm. is you could come to a tournament, and um, when you're at a water ski tournament, you can be out there all day yes. long. They yes. definitely can go on and on right. and on, and so you've skied your event. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're a kid. You've gone right. out. You've skied this morning, right. and now they've got other events going on mm -hmm. during the day. You can go to the cable park, and you can go get on play the water, over there. Or your so, parents can get sit at the cafe, the nice on the water, and eat while they're watching the kids. Or you can go yeah. into the the new museum. Will be very interactive for just brings all in ages. A whole new all different things that they're going to be more able to, to do. More to entertain them yes, while they're there, which exactly. nobody else has, so it should right. be very special. Well, that's fantastic. Yes. We certainly look forward to seeing uh, phase one completed uh, around, you, yes. let's see, the water cable. Around, the, eight, around May time period. Okay, and then so, uh, all the phases probably looking at a... 2019? 2019, yeah. a couple of year build yeah. out. Because that'll take about a year to build. That'll start, phase two will start right around when phase one opens, and then that will be completed the following spring. That's Real the projection. Real quick before we go, give us a website where people can maybe track the progress or get more information. Yes, www.usa-wwf.org. Okay. Well, Tracy, thank, thank you. you so much. We are certainly looking thank forward you. to it, and it's neat to actually be located out there and see the right. progress each yes, day yes. as it goes forward. But uh, it's you been know, a long road. Yeah. It's been a long process. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. But it's, but it's, so it's, it's neat paying to off. see it coming. Yeah. yeah together. So. Well, so. just another reason why Polk County is the water ski capital of the world. Exactly. Yes, indeed. So we're exactly. looking forward to it. Well, we, we uh, referenced earlier in the segment uh, how there's multiple organizations out at Lake Myrtle Sports Park, and the Florida State Soccer Association is one of them. They are the adult version of Florida Youth Soccer. So these are the adults playing out there. They recently had their President's Cup at Lake Myrtle. Let's take a look. Hank and Neil will be right back here on Sports Central. Teams come from around the United States, from Canada and from the Caribbean, like Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, it's all adults, so it's all age 18 and over. And we have some players here that are in their 80s. And uh, it starts on Friday, 13th, and it goes through on Monday, finals on Monday. We use, this, we use this tournament as a training facility as well. The referees are getting experience at a higher level. They, they also get uh, assessed on these games. We provide assessments to them for free, which helps them for the recertification each year. And during that process, they get mentored to the games to uh, help them improve their skills and correct small or big issues they have during the matches. The, the field complex is just amazing. 11 beautiful, full-size, uh, beautiful grass fields. People come from around the country and I love to play here. We have a great relationship, our organization with Polk County, Polk County Sports, and uh, the city of Auburndale. So, you know, they seem to like us bringing the people into the neighborhood, to stay at the local hotels and eat at the local restaurants. And, and everybody likes to come here for the warm weather when they come from the north or someplace where it's snowing.
Polk County's that created this great soccer complex, which really works very well for this event. It's like a, 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 in a tournament, you want everybody to be at one location. And this is really good. It's, all the fields are co-located. So the games are all going on at the same time. You have the spectators, the players, all the referees are milling about jointly. So that they get a chance to interact together, which is a good environment for, for the game and for, the, for what happens within, within the county. everybody. Welcome back to Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside Hank Longo and uh, some great Hello footage again. there from the Florida yes. State Soccer Association President's Cup. Doing a great job out there. Yeah, got a second segment sponsor here, another yes, we group do. that does a great job. A place where we love to eat right over there by the Lake Myrtle Sports Complex, and that's People's Barbecue. Thank you so much for sponsoring our seg second segment here on Sports Central. Yeah, we had some People's Barbecue yesterday. You weren't there. You missed out. Yeah. It was really good. Well, speaking of really, really good, the Southeastern University men's basketball team is really, really good this year. In fact, they're in the top uh, 15, almost in the top 10 of NAIA schools. And uh, we want to welcome to Sports Central second guest, head coach R.J. Barsh. And coach, welcome back to Sports Central. It's good to be here. Good to be here. So do you want me to start with all the things that coaches don't like to answer about expectations <laughs> or where you end let's up? Do at the end? Let's do it. Get it over with. Let's go right and get it over with. Business. Well, let's start with the most recent game. Uh, actually, it was last night down by what 19 we're down 19 with about 17 minutes ago in the second half and uh we have an experienced group made some some changes uh, defensively and then the players just found a way to win ended up winning by three took a four point lead about a minute to go and uh managed that down to the buzzer and uh it was a big time road win the sun conference presents many problems on the road you drive to four hours to miami the same day get off the bus eat and then you go play and so you just got to be ready to play. I'm proud of my guys for finding a way last night. So what kind of changes do you make? I mean, you're sitting there, you're watching, and things are kind of... I think the biggest change you make is you stop coaching and let your players play. Oh, really? I mean, you recruit players that can make decisions. And I think sometimes uh, I found myself over coaching situations. And so last night, we kind of just told our players to just remember how to play basketball. Not so much technique and, and, and schemes, but just go out there and, and, and play extremely hard. We started pressing a little bit, which I don't know if they were prepared for that. And so that may, that may have been a scheme, but uh, the guys just found a way, grinded, and took care of the basketball and just uh, made shots when we needed to make shots. So do they kind of get, excuse me, they kind of get a rhythm going with each other and they, they start to feel that they're driving the bus yeah, here a you, little you, bit? You, you know, there's a point in the game where you feel like you, you're in control of the tempo. And one thing that we try to do is uh, push the pace. I mean, we're one of the top 20 scoring teams in the country, about 88 points a game. And wow. so we want to play fast. And uh, so teams try to slow us down. And that's what the team did last night, try to slow us down offensively and uh, kind of make the game slower. So we had to force tempo. And uh, once you do that, the players just start, uh, start finding a way. Well, 7-1, 3-0, off to a perfect start in the conference. Uh, as I mentioned, ranked number 11 in the top 25 uh, expectations. We'll go ahead and get those questions out of the, the way. What were the expectations or what were the players' expectations uh, before the season? I, I've got to imagine that this, the goals are always the same, you know, win conference, get to the playoffs or whatever. But experienced team, as you mentioned, what are your expectations? And, and when I say experience, I'm, I'm not from the standpoint of the team playing together, but mm -hmm. experience as far as uh, Division One transfers, Division Two transfers, guys who have played in big games and been key parts of winning programs. Uh, so the experience of knowing how to win. So coming into this year, I think the expectations for our players were to win. Now, how special can we be? We really didn't talk about that. We just wanted to win one game at a time. We have on our locker room go 1-0 and every single day. And if you do that, you can have a special season. But the expectations were very, very high. We could see that from how other coaches rated us early in the season when they saw our roster. And uh, we were receiving votes in the first top 25 polls, so that kind of raised expectations in our locker room for um, how good this team could potentially be. And it's still really early. I mean, we're only three conference games in, but I like where we're sitting right now. We're in, we're in control of our destiny. And if our guys keep uh, with that same focus of 1-0 every day, uh, not living in the past, even if it's great, and not living too far ahead in the future, mm -hmm. we'll be okay. Focus on the moment. Exactly. Now, when you're... Uh, averaging 88 points a game. I mean, that's like pro basketball scoring. 
you've got a lot of guys that are making big shots from the outside. That, yeah, we I have, uh, I believe, seven players averaging from uh, seven and a half points to 20 points a game. Uh, last night, our player, who's our eighth leading scorer, uh, had 14 points, and he was our leading scorer in the first half. And so uh, our, our staff with Coach Lee and uh, Coach Taylor, we go and recruit guys who can score. Uh, and so one through five, if you're on the floor, you have the ability to score on our team. And so that presents problems for teams who uh, try to slow you down, and we can isolate and find matchups that we want to exploit. And then we trust our guys to make the right reads. Do you think it's – Try to find a way to, to, to ask this. Do you think it's easier to recruit to Southeastern now because of everything else that has happened on the campus with the development, not only of your program, but with other, you know, football coming on and some of the other things? Do you find that the brand is more well known out there when you're on the recruiting trail? Well, most definitely. Um, our, our, um, our umbrella, as far as how far we can go and people know who we are, has broadened immensely. And I think um, the way that our, our media department, our, our SID uh, department, our, our athletic director, the way they market athletics, the way our university talks about athletics is special. And a lot of small universities do not do that. And so I always tell recruits, we're a small university, but we're big time once you get here. And a lot of the guys that we're recruiting, they're at big schools that have a small feel. And so they want, they want that big time feel. And so we sell that. We send clips from football games. And we've seen clips from, from soccer games. I mean, shout out to Coach Belly and the women's soccer team going to the NI National Tournament. And so we do those things because it shows that athletics is healthy and, and, and teams are winning. And I don't care how old you are, you want to be a part of something that's thriving. Mm -hmm. And when we send those clips out and you got fire coming from our scoreboard for a football game and you got our girls team, you know, not losing a game in a long time, it, it helps. It definitely helps. We talk about the the girls team. Is there a little bit of uh, friendly rivalry there? there just, there's, there's absolutely no rivalry at all because um, what we try to do is iron sharpens iron. And so when their girls are in the gym, our guys get hungry to get in the gym. Mm -hmm. When their girls uh, uh, are going to class, our guys are going to class. So it's, it's a good thing when we get on the bus to go over to away games, it's one team. And we try to represent Southeastern to the highest of our ability. And they've just done a superb job of doing that the last couple of years. And you know, although athletics is important, I think it's really stressed that your education is important too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're here at school and you get, you know, you want to win, but you also want to win as a student. Yeah, that's important. Um, and we've been fortunate in my, in my five years there, we've had uh, 11 young men graduate who are now either high school, co high school teachers. We got three guys who are coaches. The head coach at Lakeland High School is Dwayne Johnson was uh, probably the best player to play in our program, led us to the Final Four, is now the head coach at Lakeland High School. Uh, the assistant coach at Polk State uh, was on our Final Four team. And so you get guys who understand that part of academics, and we don't recruit you if you don't. Uh, that's one of the things as a coach, you get to decide the guys you want to join your program, and so you have to have manageable outcomes that you want to worry about, and going to class is not something we want to have to stress to our players. Fantastic. Let's talk about, you talked about the coaching tree. You know, you're still a very young coach. And, and, and what does that mean to you as, as a coach or as a, you know, as a person developing? And not only your players to see them graduate and go on, but continuing that, you know, because obviously the world needs coaches. It's, I think there's only thing more, one thing worse than being a, a coach and having to listen to the parents is probably the official, being an official. <laughs> but Definitely. what does it mean to you to kind of have that coaching tree and seeing it spread out? You know, uh, when I won a, a championship as a freshman at junior, when I was in junior college, and on that team there's like six coaches. And so when I got into coaching, I, I tried to find leaders and not people who wanted to be led. And so if you have a team full of leaders and you find that in recruiting from talking to their teachers, their mm -hmm. parents, those things are going to happen. And you're going to get a locker room full of guys who want to take your principles and then move on to the next direction. And then we have a huge camp every summer. You know, we get 300, 300 kids that cycle through our gym, and my players coach the camp every summer. And I think they start to feel the love of what it's like to help a young, a young man develop their basketball game and then also, you know, look up to them as a mentor. So those things, once that happens for you and your player, I mean, uh, it's contagious, and uh, it's really cool to see. 
Well, you talked about being 3-0 and in the Sun Conference. Uh, let's talk about some of those teams that, are, that might be potential roadblocks for you. Obviously, the goal is to win a conference championship yeah. and then see where the playoffs lead you. Who are some of those teams that we need to be aware of as the season continues to, to Well, uh, uh, St. Thomas, uh, Coach Gale, they're really good. They have a, an All-American returning post player. Uh, Kaiser University presents a, a lot of issues. They're a very, very large team. Uh, well coached and then of course Warner University is always pretty good and we're fortunate enough to already have played that game and so we won't see them again till the spring and so you know our, but the Sun Conference is a Sun Conference you got Florida Memorial who's extremely athletic won the conference last year and so when you go on the road it's a dog fight you just got to make sure you can steal a couple and then protect yourself at home. You've got a uh, you know you're just getting going here actually you go you know deep into February so there's a lot of work there just to keep everybody motivated yeah you know it is and so you as a coach you have to do things inside of your program and uh, the DNA of our program is is uh, hard work beats talent every day mm -hmm. and we have the talent and if you put the hard, you put work, the hard work then you're not gonna you know so if we don't want guys who need to be uh, motivated we want them to be intrinsically motivated to play and another thing we do is we recruit players that want to play beyond college, whether that's overseas, ABA. You know, we got guys playing professional in Canada, professional in international basketball. And so being able to give them that opportunity, you know, is, the, is a huge motivation. Motivation for yeah. them to get up every day and make the best of what they do out there on the court. Yes. Well, before we go to break here, I just want a quick comment on uh, what you think the impact and, and how great it is to have the Lakeland Magic playing at the RP Funding Center. And uh, is it another draw to have that kind of thing in a community where you're playing uh, basketball? No, it's huge because um, every every week two different programs come and, and play against the Lakeland Magic. And you can go to shoot arounds, you can meet coaches, you see players that you used to coach back in the day or guys that you train. And then for uh, recruiting purposes, it's another event. Mm -hmm. That's well put together in Lakeland, and so uh, and they've made that facility phenomenal, and they've done a good job, and it's really cool. One of our managers is actually in the front office over there, uh, one of the ticket sales guys. So it's cool to have a bridge over into the Lakeland Magic, and some of their guys come over and work out with us. Some of their staff come over and hang out with us, and so we've got a really good relationship. And so it shows with our players that listen, we're at any high school, and at any moment the D League coach could be walking or the G League coach could yeah. be walking into our practice that's another motivating factor and it's really cool and it helps well very good coach we wish you good luck as the season wears on and uh, uh, hopefully uh, we won't take sides because you know Warner and Weber and yeah. Polk County as well but uh, we wish you good luck <laughs> yeah. as things move forward and we appreciate you coming on Sports Central all right thank you there's a huge game coming up on uh, Wednesday it's our silent night game seven o'clock uh, we're going to pack the gym out, quiet the first 10 points, and then at 10 points, place goes crazy. This is an annual yeah. thing, right? Annual yeah, thing. you guys so have been doing so that. So explain this again a we'll little bit. we have Christmas trees. We'll have Santa. It's like our, our Christmas extravaganza at Southeastern, and uh, it's a really cool deal. So if you're in Lakeland, if you're 25 an hour away, it's worth the drive to come down on the uh, the 6 and watch that game. We okay, might need so to get the cameras over there. Yes, because, okay, uh, yes. It's, it's silent night. It's silent night. And you can't say anything for the first, first 10 points. First 10 points, you're extremely quiet. Now, is it 10 points a team or just the just, first just 10 the points? Just the home team. Oh, just we don't care about game. the visitors. The team, they're not going to score. <laughs> it's going to be silent night for them all yeah. night. And it's just very weird when you're playing against, and, and we hit a shot, and you nobody sneakers cheers. and the basketball. It's, it's quiet the entire time. People act like they're asleep on the sidelines. You know, they're singing silent night. You know, it's a, and wow. then the 10 point happens, and, and the gym goes crazy, up. and it's, a, wow. it's really cool. Well, we definitely have to get over there. I think Check so. That out. This could be a fun event. Yeah. All right, Coach, thanks again no for problem. coming on Sports Central. We really appreciate it and good luck this season. Thank you. Well, I don't know if they were singing Silent Night at Simmers Young Park recently when they had the Ultimate Frisbee Tournament, but we're going to take a look and see what that action was. Hank and Neil will be right back here on Sports Central.
All right, so today is our Janus Ultimate Frisbee Tournament. We have uh, 28 teams out here playing Ultimate uh, in a mixed division, youth division, and an open division. found that Polk County just has a lot of really great fields. It just, it's a big event and a lot of where we're, where we're set up in Tampa, we really don't have fields this size, so we always talk to Polk County for these big events. I've been the mixed coordinator for two years now. It's a fun tournament. Um, it's an off-season tournament, so you get a lot of club teams that are coming in but are also aiming to have a lot more fun um, as opposed to a more competitive, serious club season game. Um, but because you have higher level athletes, it still makes the play a lot of fun. Come from all over. From mixed, our furthest right now is from Atlanta. Um, they're driving down, or they drove down yesterday. Um, a lot of the teams are in Florida. We have a lot of alum teams from the colleges around, which creates an interesting dynamic between the open teams. Well, I played on a club team, Tabby Rosa, a women's club team, and we made it to nationals this year. I would say that Ultimate in Florida is growing. Tampa Bay is a big um, a hub for Ultimate, and that's a lot due to a lot of people putting a lot of time and effort to grow the sport. Um, even throughout the United States, it just is continuously growing larger. everybody, welcome back to Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside Hank Longo in this third segment brought to us by Days In in Lakeland. But some great footage out there. Have you ever played Ultimate Frisbee? No, I never have. Really? Have you? Yeah, well, I was a little bit younger. I don't think I mean, I I've played Frisbee, but I've never played Ultimate Frisbee. Yeah, and I like uh, Frisbee golf. Have you ever played that? I've never we used to play that in college. It's pretty fun. Golf. It's pretty fun. Well, this uh, third segment, we are very excited to uh, welcome our next guest because it's it's an old vi old event at uh, the RP Funding Center, but it's got a new twist. So we want to welcome to the program Leroy Mason and Ryla Bryant. Thank you so much for coming on Sports Central. You're well, we're here to talk about the Lakeland Pro Rodeo Classic and the FMX Stunt Show. So we'll get to the rodeo in a second, but we want to hear what is this new edition? What's it all about? Well, as you know, we've been in the, this is a 30 plus year in there and every year we try to bring something new besides the rodeo contest. Mm -hmm. So I got this idea about if the building was high enough inside, could we bring in the FMX? It's freestyle motorcycles and four wheelers. So I talked to some guys and uh, we worked it out so that they we combine them with the rodeo. So I mean, these guys are crazy. I, I, 
A lot of people think bull riders are crazy, and bull riders are going to be watching these people doing flips in the air and all I this know. stuff. I know. You watch it, and it's just unbelievable. Because some of these, depending on the venue, you know, right. but um, when you watch this, like in the X Games and they're outside, these guys are going like 40 feet up in the air. That's if, if, uh, am I correct on that? Yeah, 42 yeah. to 47 feet. And they'll be hanging on the back of the bike and twirling around on the bike can and maybe take, standing on top Hank of it. Can you take with you and, uh, and have him do it? We've got a four-wheeler for him. There okay. we go. <laughs> I can handle the four-wheeler. I can so, handle the four-wheeler. So the event is, uh, correct if I'm wrong, January 26th and 27th, uh, both nights starts at 8 p.m. and it's at the RP Funding Center. Right. We're all still getting used to calling it that because you said you've been coming there to the Lakeland Center, even the Lakeland Civic Center uh, a long, exactly. long time ago. Uh, but the RP Funding Center, the 26th and 27th, but you still will have uh, the rodeo as the main attraction, and Ryla, you're part of that, and yes, uh, welcome. Ryla is the star of the show. <laughs> I that's mean, right. that's what they're coming for, is actually to watch Ryla, and then the rest of it's just fill-in, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what role you have in the rodeo. You do some barrel racing, is yes, that correct? Sir. But you're also part of the opening, and the opening is always so special, not only to that event, but to all rodeos, as you, as you salute uh, America and, and those mm -hmm. who are in harm's way and serving our country. Tell us I a little bit about that. I am a patriotic cowgirl, and we carry flags, and we're like a whole team of white horses and riders. And so we do an opening ceremony, which is all about being patriotic, and we bring out the flags and recognize all the soldiers and everything. And I'm also in the barrel racing. So we do, it's set up in a cloverleaf pattern of three barrels, and you have to run around them. And whoever is the fastest is the winner. Okay, well, we're taking a look at some action right now on the on the screen there. We saw the opening, and then we saw some of the barrel racing in the yeah, past. Well, You've Gator had the Gator wrestling. Boys there, <laughs> and it's always been quite quite the spectacle. Uh, what is your favorite part of the rodeo, Ryla? I don't have a favorite. I All love of it? <laughs> everything. It's really fun to come out and enjoy the rodeo and spend time with your family and just have a fun time. So how did you learn to barrel race and ride a horse? Well, part of it was just watching people at the rodeo, and my mom really contributed in, in coaching me how to do it. And how long have you been barrel racing for? I first started riding on a tiny pony, and my mom did lead line, and so I just sat on the pony and held on while she led me around the barrels whenever I was about two. Oh my gosh. Mercy. So you're kind of like a veteran now. <laughs> Well, Leroy, let's talk about uh, tickets, uh, what kind of price we're looking for. I see there's a special if you, if you get five show or five tickets and the parking's free. Talk about some of the features. Yeah, um, well, the tickets start at 25 but there's some discounts if you'll watch some of the TV commercials and all to tell you where to get discounts and stuff like that. But for every ticket you buy, you can bring a kid free. So it does, the kids, you know, if two parents, they can bring two kids free. And uh, of course, you can run the tickets and run, run all the way up to uh, thirty-eight dollars in the VIP seating. And this year, the, what they've done in that building f for the Magic is un incredible. Because I've watched that through the years, and I've complained about the sound, I've complained about the lighting, and the replay boards. I mean, it was. Now I went to a game the other night, and it blew me away. The they have spent about $14 million redoing that center, and it is outstanding, and I'm looking forward to putting on a production there again this year. Well, and I think the important part of that, excuse <coughs> me, Hank, is the fact that not only is it important to, and, and you know, kudos to the county and to the city of Lakeland and the partners for investing in, uh, in that project, but it's not only about keeping existing business, it's about recruiting new business. And, and here's a first-hand mm -hmm. uh, testimony, if you will, about an event that is looking forward to a long-term, uh, continuing that long-term relationship at the RP Funding Center because of that investment. Would that be a correct statement? That's correct, because I was about to retire and just say, forget, it, you know, and just back off. And when they, when I heard that they was going to do all this, I ain't quitting now. Yeah. I'm, gonna I'm just getting stuff. started. <laughs> because now, I mean, it's incredible. And we're bringing in another camera crew this year that uh, besides the instant replay, it'll be behind the shoots. You can see the inside, but behind the shoots, you can see the bull riders when they're taking their wrap or when the bronc riders are getting ready. So we'll have cameras right up on the shoot showing on the two big screens. And uh, it, it's, 
I, I'm really looking forward to it, and it's uh, it's actually, I mean, it's still a PRCA sanctioned rodeo. The professional cowboys that come here and the professional cowgirls are coming here to win points and money to be able to go to the NFR in Las Vegas, which this year's final starts next week. In fact, I leave Tuesday for Nevada, Las Vegas, Nevada. So what are the events that the folks are going to be able to see at the rodeo? Well, there's seven events, which is the bronc riding. There's two bronc riding events. And there's three timed events like steer wrestling, team roping, and, and uh, tie down roping. And then you got your bull riding. Then you got your ladies pro barrel racing. But then we have the junior pro barrel racers, which she's part of. And what we've done, we, it was an invitation deal, and we've invited the best eight barrel racers in Polk County to compete there at the Pro Rodeo. Wow. So it's, uh, it's exciting about it. So well, you say you invited the best eight um, barrel riders here in Polk County. Is, is rodeo and riding, is, is this big in our community? I mean, I mean, I'm not involved in that, so it's interesting to hear, you know. Well, a, she can ask that because she goes here. to all the junior events. Yeah, it is a big part of our community. Like right here in Polk County, we have um, actually about three rodeo associations for juniors that are participating, that a lot of the youth participate in. It's down at the Cumbie Arena, and um, it's a great time for, peop for all the kids to learn how to ride and really get ready. So one day they can do the professional rodeos and um, like pursue their dreams in that. That's fantastic. One other thing that we did bring back by popular demand, and that's the, the cowboy clowns. monkeys. Oh, the monkeys! The cowboy monkeys <laughs> and their dogs. They they'll be back. I mean, uh, I know they've been here a lot, but people love, love them. them dogs. Our and our boss, Mark Jackson, will be thrilled to hear that. He we'll make sure us. that he knows that the rodeo <laughs> monkeys are back and they're uh, back. Going to be I mean, at the event. So rodeo monkeys the regular rodeo events, which are great Correct. in their own, and then the FMX stunt show. Right, along with the, all the famous white horses and the, and the opening and closing. The opening. Now this is, what, this is what amazes me, is that you're doing it uh, at the RP Funding Center. They've got uh, the Lakeland Magic there, and I've been in there recently, and they've got the court set up. It's beautiful. All that's got to come out. All that's coming out. And a bunch and then, of dirt has to get brought yep, in, I would believe. 10 to 12 inches of dirt all over that floor. Wow. And then, and then we then have to bring in all the, the steel. So the, are they, for the um, FMX stunt show, how are they, are they going off of ramps to perform they will this? Be going off usually of ramps. you'll see them going off big mound, yep. you know, well, it'll be a big dirt track that they're. Well, we've got it worked um, out now where we open up both ends of the arena and during intermission we put the ramps up and we've got them where you can put them up really fast. It takes us about 15 minutes to set the ramps up. That's fast. And then they'll do the show and they'll keep jumping until people quit hollering probably. Oh I, I don't, I, you know, as long as the people are enjoying it, sure. I don't cut it off. But I don't let them, if I test it dying a little bit, I, I just say that's it. But it, the FMX show will probably last about 10, 15, 20 minutes. Just depends on how many tricks they do. And uh, I, I'm, I'm excited about it. I, I'm, I'm really well, if you've been doing it for 30 years and you're excited about it, there must be something special going on. Well, yeah, I've been doing it for 50 years, but I've been there. Well, I, when you count it up, it's almost 40 years, ever since the building opened. Wow, that's really? fantastic. Well, that is great. Again, the event, uh, the Lakeland Pro Rodeo Classic Extreme Edition. It'll be January 26th and 27th. Uh, both nights starts at 8 p.m. at the RP Funding Center. 863-834-8111 uh, uh, for tickets, and you can get those between 9.30 and 5 p.m. Um, at the RP Funding Center box office. Again, I know there's going to be different specials, uh, so check out your advertisements. Uh, they'll be all over the place as we get right. uh, closer to the event. Anything else we should know before we had to break uh, about the event or? Well, uh, one of the things, there's very few VIP seating this year, the way that they reconfigured the arena. Okay. And the rest of it is general mission. So when you come, get, go ahead and get your ticket and get there first so you can get the best seats because it's general mission and so you wherever getting, you want to see, you need to get there early. Let me just, let me just uh, uh, make that point even further for him because I've actually had the opportunity to sit in those seats before in the old configuration. If you want to be up close and personal to this, when they do the barrel racing, they're going to throw a little dirt on you. Not in a bad way, but just you're that close that when that, hurt, that horse turns the corner, you might get a little dirt on you. And that's part of the experience. It's pretty neat. 
You can feel it then. You can feel it. It's almost like you can almost feel the horse's breath. They get so close. It's, it's pretty neat. Uh, thank you both. Uh, Ryla, thank you so much, and good luck. We hope you end me. up on top there and of Ryla, those eight. I, I just, you know, before we let Ryla, you're going to come co-host the show with me sometime, aren't you? Sure. I think you and I sitting up yeah, here. Yeah, she has some got, TV experience TV we heard experience. off of there. So I think yeah. you and I could Did have a great job. Co-host this, co the Sports Central sometime. and. Then you'll go to Hollywood and you'll have limos and all that. Just don't forget your buddy Hank, okay? Okay, okay. just making sure. Well, I don't know about all that, but <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh, to both of you, Leroy and uh, Ryla, and good luck on the event. And we can't look, we look forward to it. We can't wait. All right, our athlete spotlight is always a great feature here on Sports Central. And recently, we caught up with Danielle Alvarez, a star on the Lake Wales high school football team. Hank and me will be right back here on Sports Central. First time playing football, I wasn't, wasn't really sure with my sport because, you know, I was getting knocked around. I always played with older kids, so, yeah, wasn't really, you know, kind of into football like that until, you know, actually, like, it became my antidote to any anger or anything that I felt, you know, would bother me and I didn't show anybody else, so I expressed out here on the field and, you know, turned to something more than just, you know, playing football. Football brings out a lot of pain, a lot of frustrations that I, I feel that I need it to be released, and I'll release out here on the field. And behind the scenes, um, when I'm playing with my brothers, my teammates, um, they make me feel like, you know, I feel loved and trusted and feel like they trust me. I was supposed to go through, um, I think last year I had a concussion. Um, having to bounce back and having to doubt myself whether I'll be back on the field with my brothers and play with them was really hard for me, you know, and especially going to my junior, going to my senior years. It was really tough, so I worked extremely hard and I tried to find good techniques so, you know, I don't have that same result again. And um, my teammates, they was behind me 100%. They believed that I was going to be out there on the field. They believed that I was going to get through that obstacle that I was facing in life. So they, that was really hard for me, yeah. The hardest part about playing football is interpreting everything that you learn to practice into the game. Because, you know, when you play the game, it's like everything you learn just seems to, you know, fade away and you're just out there just to play football. And when you have to interpret what you've seen on film and also the technique that you have to learn out here on football, it, it kind of, you know, kind of like fares away a little bit. So you just have to remember that and, um, yeah, play safe football, play safe physical smart football. Right now we're just saying whatever social media, we're sending all that out and we're just being focused on what we have to do to make sure we're successful not on the field but also off the field too and that way this plays a big difference in a good team and a great team and right now we're a great team. I don't really see it as, you know, something that's, oh my gosh, you know, this big game for us when they get this. Every game is a big game, so we prepare ourselves the same. Lake Gibson is a great team, but at the same time, you know, we gotta make sure we're prepared and we're prepared for it. So I'm, I'm gonna get myself prepared. That's, that's no doubt about it, but I also trust that my teammates will get themselves prepared too. They know what kind of game we're going into today. They know it's gonna be physical, hard-nosed football. So I think they're prepared for that. And you know, we as a team are prepared for that. We're ready to give the fans a show, ready to you know, accomplish what we need to accomplish and you know, prove them doubt us wrong. Oh man, um, every, every moment I have out here on the practice field, especially being my teammates, is a memory that I will never forget. It's unexplainable, it is just outstanding. I would, I would never, never in a million years where I thought that I would be in this predicament with my teammates. You know, they'll ride and die for me to the full extent. 
and um, I would do the same for them. So it's really an unbreakable bond that can't no one break. Even if we do you know, like face a little adversity, we'd still be there for each other and we still trust each other. And that's what I like most about my teammates. Just be yourself. If you know the requirements that you set high for yourself, just you know meet up to them requirements, set expectations for yourself, and eventually everything else will follow. And other someone will look, someone will look at you, and you know see what you're doing, and they will follow behind your footsteps, especially if it's good and you're getting good results out of it. After I graduate, I do plan on going to college. Where to? I'm not sure. Whatever the scholarship takes me, but I do plan on going to college and play college ball. And um. Yeah, just getting better and better in football. If football does work, I plan on um, being a physical therapist and doing that. Hey everybody, welcome back to the fourth and final segment of Sports Central. I'm Neil Duncan and that's Hank Longo. This hey, you know, our colors, like, you know, we're kind of matching the logo and everything. We're kind of just styling with all the colors in the center. You're just today. trying to bring attention to your jacket, and then I don't have one on. I know what you're doing, Hank. <laughs> no, just, this fourth segment brought to us by Contempo plans. Vacation Homes, great partner of tourism, sports marketing, but not a sponsor of Hank's wardrobe. <laughs> So a lot of fun things going on, <laughs> folks, as we uh, kind of are getting into our holiday season. And well, before before we go there, there was a great uh, a great uh, athlete spotlight there on uh, on Daniel from Lake Wales. Unfortunately, last weekend Lakeland High School lost in the state playoffs uh, to Plant, and Victory Christian lost to Jacksonville University Christian. So we don't currently have any teams left in the FHSA uh, high school football playoffs. But uh, the good thing is. We're starting to turn into the the winter time, uh, the the winter sports, and we're always blessed to have such great athletes and coaches here in Polk County. Uh, and so we move on to the second season, well, you if know, you will. You, you, we're going into basketball, and uh, I know Winter Haven's got a basketball player coming back that ought to be mm -hmm. exciting for them and the girls. They, well, just Winter beat Haven, the national championship team last year. I was going to say Winter Haven has it going on in, in girls and boys basketball. Uh, you're right. Uh, that Winter Haven boys team, a lot of people uh, predict to win that district, uh, which is um, Kathleen, Bartow, which Bartow's always a power, um, and yeah, Kathleen can, has been over the years, and Winter Haven, rough, yeah. Lakeland. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see, but that team has the opportunity and has the depth to maybe make a run to the RP Funding Center, which we're blessed to have the boys and girls state finals here uh, in Lakeland, in Polk County, RP Funding Center. Kudos to uh, the Lakeland Championship, which uh, we're, we're proud to be a part of uh, in those efforts to keep those uh, state championships here in Polk County, because guess what? That's where they belong. Yeah, and with the new um uh, Lakeland Magic, are they going to get to play on that court for these championships? Yeah, a brand new uh, basketball court there uh, wow. with Lakeland Magic, so they get the opportunity. And then all the, again, you talk about events, all the cosmetic mm -hmm. things that were done inside the arena. That's not the entire renovation to the RP Funding Center, uh, but that was part of it uh, in, in the deal with the Magic. So really looking forward to that. You know, and we didn't get the opportunity to mention it, uh, but it's not just the Lakeland Magic. Uh, the Florida Tropics are also uh, back at the RP Funding Center. And so you were talking about bringing the dirt in and the basketball court, but they also have to put an indoor soccer uh, field yeah. in there. So kudos to Tony Camarillo and his whole staff at the RP Funding yeah. Center for the job that they do uh, all the time in those events. But you talk about uh, the uh, Florida Tropics, they're off to a 3-1 start. Uh, they're going to have a game, uh, actually it's tonight as we're live on December 1st, uh, that's at the RP Funding Center and that's taking on the Syracuse Silver Knights. Uh, then you move into the Lakeland Magic, they're 6-3 and three to start the season, uh, December 2nd which is a Saturday, uh, they'll be taking on the North Arizona Suns, uh, but they're leading that Southeast Division in the G League, so not only does Lakeland have a new professional basketball team, they're, they're good, they're, <laughs> they're good, yeah. so, so a great uh, it's, it's a great time to be here in Polk County and uh, at the RP Funding Center. Definitely and of course for all you youngsters and grown-ups that are into Legos, Legoland Florida Resort Christmas Bricktacular and that's going to take place December 2nd through uh, Monday, um, December 25th. Yeah, and we, 
I'm sorry. Bring in the season with a 30 foot tall Christmas tree, a Lego Christmas tree. And again, we, we will, we may do it multiple times during this uh, local update, but you get those discounted attraction tickets. Where do you get them? The Visitor Information Center, which is one half mile south of I-4 on Highway 27. It's Polk County's official Visitor Information Center. Uh, they have a store there with uh, Polk County products. They also have those discount attraction tickets. So as we get into the holidays, we get into Christmas, and you're looking for something Company maybe for someone coming out. Exactly. Yeah. You want to get up there to the Visitor Information Center. Justin and his whole crew will take care of whatever you need. There's things going on in Polk County. There's places in Polk County you probably never knew about. Get up there and they'll help you out. Yeah, yeah. they'll do a wonderful job with uh, assisting you with all your tourist information needs. And boy, just a, a lot of basketball going on with the magic uh, all through uh, December. Yeah, but then go. we've got some great Christmas parades, too. Yeah, the 37th Annual Lakeland Christmas Parade, that's uh, Thursday, December 7th. Of course, that's downtown Lakeland. Uh, I believe it starts there at the Lakeland Center and then makes its way downtown. Uh, so a great event. I know a lot of communities in, in Polk County do have Christmas parades, so you definitely want to go to the visitcentralflorida.org calendar or centralfloridasports.com for some of the other events going on in Polk County, but it is the season for those Christmas parades. Well, you got the 16th Annual Havendale. Christmas Parade uh, December 8th that's a Friday and uh, the city of Winter Haven in conjunction with the city of Auburndale uh, brings you that magical Christmas celebration parade starts at 7 p.m. starts at the Spring Lake Square Plaza and it's going to work us all the way up the Havendale Boulevard to Wells Fargo in Auburndale so a great parade coming up there yeah and then you have uh, on Saturday December 9th and Sunday December 10th the Central Florida Beast and Sprint Weekend. Uh, that event is with uh, 12 to 14 miles and 30 to 35 obstacles uh, between you and the finish line. The Spartan Beast will test everything you're made of, your strength, your endurance, and your resolve. I mean, think, now, think of this. I, when I was reading this, it really kind of put me at awe. This event is 12 to 14 miles. And then they're going to throw mean, 35 long, obstacles along the way. 30, 35 <laughs> obstacles along with it. I mean, that's going to, you've got to be in some great shape to be able to endure that. Yeah, we also have uh, AAU League-based national championship. That's uh, Friday, December 15th through Sunday, December 17th up there in Davenport, a three-day pool and bracket ages 8 under, 10 and under, 12 and under, 14 under. This is a tournament solely for those athletes who have participated throughout the 2017 fall season in a sanctioned AAU football league. So that's going to be going up there uh, in Davenport. So I'm assuming that's at uh, Northeast Regional Park. Yeah. Uh, more information can be found on that at aaufootball.com. We've got some uh, sponsors we want to th uh, thank. Oh, yes, we do. I uh, want to thank the folks at Echo Suites in Lakeland, the Ledger, the Hilton Garden Inn in Lakeland, Abuelos, and Hampton Inn Bartow. Thank you so very much for all your support. We appreciate it immensely. Absolutely. And I wanted to mention uh, that the uh, Tiger Spring training schedule, of course, that you talk about renovations, Publix Field at Joker Marchant Stadium. Recently, it was released that uh, they will have 17 home games of their 34 overall 2018 Grapefruit League season. Uh, so you definitely want to check that out. It starts February 22nd with their exhibition against Florida Southern College. Uh, the season tickets for spring training aren't quite on sale yet, uh, but on January 13th at 10 a.m., you can get those singles, uh, single game uh, tickets, so you definitely want to check that out. And they expect the likes of Andrew McCutcheon from Fort Meade, who plays for the Pirates, Phillies pitcher Alec Asher, who was from Lakeland, and uh, Orioles infielder Trey Mancini, who is from Winter Haven. They're all expected to be there at Publix Field at Joker Marchant Stadium. Fantastic. Pretty cool stuff. We'd like to thank you. We'd like to thank you for uh, watching uh, today's version of Sports Central. Uh, our next version is going to be December 15th, where we're going to be able to do the best of the best. And I'll tell you what, 2017, though it's been a difficult year in some uh, aspects, of course, Hurricane Irma coming through and uh, taking a lot of resolve from a lot of people, not just mm -hmm. in Polk County, but from around the state. Uh, but we would like to thank uh, the county and, and all their efforts and the cleanup. And, and we know it's taken some, uh, some effort from a lot of different uh, agencies. But uh, yeah. as we just pass the Thanksgiving time and we're thankful for things, uh, we're thankful, be thankful that for all those folks and exactly. all the help we get to get things back together and getting running on a regular schedule again. Absolutely. Absolutely. So CentralFloridaSports.com, visit CentralFlorida.org for a full listing of events. Again, 
For Hank Longo and Neil Duncan, we will catch you again December 15th for the best of the best from 2017. We'll see you then. Goodbye.